And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren Backweedy here at Cross Timber Farm. Welcome to 8th Day Chronicles. Glad to have you with us today. If you're a regular uh, viewer on our channel and, and follow along with our videos, you're like, uh, we don't consider you a, a, a visitor to the farm. You're like uh, a neighbor. So we appreciate you being with us. And it's another beautiful fall day. The temperature's nice and warm and I actually went fishing about all day yesterday and uh, took a break from the farm. And Susan done all the farm chores yesterday and uh, gave me a break to go fishing. And uh, it was actually uh, so warm that I was down to a, a t-shirt and I almost felt like if I could have, I'd have took my t-shirt off. It was warm on the water. But anyway, uh, it won't be long before the cold weather starts moving in on us and uh, to come outside and work, we'll need heavy coats and things of that nature. The snow will be flying and uh, winter will be here, but uh, there's no such thing as a bad day. All days are good days, and uh, whether it's sun shiny and nice out or snow's blowing, uh, uh, those snowy days gives us good reason to sometimes to do some of the things inside that needs done, work inside the barn, work inside the house, whatever the case may be. So. Uh, we need those days too so today i'm going to take you along we're in the process of building a shed for our hay equipment and our tractor uh, right now we have a tractor parked under a metal carport roof up at our house we did have it for a long time parked in the barn and now uh, when we brought goats back to the farm uh, we needed that space inside the barn uh, for the for the animals when we need to bring them in uh, for hoof care, things of that nature, the, the goats are in and out, and it was uh, the tractor was really in the way in the barn. So we're in the process of building a shed. We already have one shed. You may be able to see some of it here behind me. It is uh, uh, a, a pretty good size shed with a concrete floor, and we have some of our, our implements parked under that shed now. We have a, our drum mower under there and a five-foot bush hog, a woods bush hog that we really like. And uh, we have our pull-behind uh, brush hog mower that we use behind our four-wheeler. Uh, and the four-wheeler stays parked under there. But we're out of room, and we need room for uh, the tractor to park and for our baler. Uh, the baler right now is in the barn, and we need to get that out of there. It's causing causing issues sometimes going in and out with the with the animals. So, uh, as you can maybe be able to see here, and I'll give you a closer up look, we have got a lot of lumber, and we're fixing to start uh, construction on a new uh, shed. I guess you maybe call it our equipment shed. Uh, and we're thinking about three-siding this one to keep wind and rain from blowing in under it, snow blowing under it, and keep the sun out from shining in under it. Uh, the one we have now is just a shed roof with no sides, and uh, we may eventually go ahead and, and close it in too. We have a problem right here on top of this ridge where our farm is with wind. Wind gets really bad here sometimes, and uh, we live kind of in a valley with mountains all around us. And we're on a ridge kind of in this valley and we catch the brunt of the wind and it can uh, get pretty stiff at times so uh, with an open shed like that the wind can just go through them uh, you don't really have to worry about a lot of wind damage uh, the wind pulling tin off the roof and things of that nature with an open concept like that but it does allow snow and some rain to blow in on your equipment which we don't like. Uh, so we've not decided yet what we're gonna do, but we are definitely gonna put a roof roof up to, uh, to get everything parked under. That protects them for the most part. Uh, 
the sides would be even better and we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there first we're gonna get the roof on it so as you can see i've got a lot of lumber here uh i don't know if you can see it all i'll show you here in just a moment we were lucky enough that my brother-in-law has a portable sawmill and also his family for years uh, run a logging business and he sawed these these timbers here um, a couple of years ago and they're they're good and cured they've been cut long enough to where they're cured and they're not going to crack and do anything else anymore due to the curing stage so he graciously gave me this whole my equipment trailer here loaded full of lumber and this lumber is phenomenal it's pine lumber and we'll show you what we did to preserve it and show you the lumber and what we're going to do with it uh, a lot of the old timers uh, back in the day would uh, do their own lumber preservative to post they were going to be putting in the ground and on buildings and things of that nature to preserve them before pressure treated stuff came along and was readily available and if you look around a lot of the the old posts that these old timers back in the day put in the ground man they're still there the these these old timers and these farmers knew what they were doing they drug a lot of their logs out of the the woods with a team of mules and chop down trees with a cross cut saw and, a, and an axe and split fence post with an old uh, sledge and wedges and a lot of hard work but in any event a lot of these posts they would put in the ground they'd treat them before they put them in uh, and those that they treated before they put them in the ground are still there to this day it's amazing what the old timers knew and we need to take lessons from that. Uh, if you're privileged enough to know a old time farmer, and I call them old timers and old time farmers, that title is said with much respect, much respect. That's not a derogatory term. That is an actual term of respect in, in my dictionary. Uh, if you are privileged enough to know one of these old time farmers, hey, you need to sit down and pick their brain whenever every chance you get. Sit down and talk to them about how they did stuff back in the day, uh, what worked and what didn't, and take what they learned and, and store that away in your, in your mind's book of knowledge because they knew what they were doing and they uh, done stuff a lot of it the hard way and they had to prove what worked because they were putting a lot of work into it uh, So this is what a lot of the old timers did and, and we're trying to follow that with this lumber. This was uh, this raw rough cut lumber and the post that we're gonna be putting in the ground and Some of it that could be exposed to weather. We're treating it the old time way and we'll take you along with that. Okay, folks, as you can see, the lumber here, and this lumber right here is what we're going to be using for our ground posts. These are going to be going in the ground, uh, except for the two in the far back. They're going to be uh, the stringers or the uh, uh, the ends of the, the post that go across where the rafters lay on. But as you can see, this lumber, it is, it is something else. These are 12 and a half foot long and they are uh, four by nines. They're huge. Uh, they are really nice, very few cracks in them. They have a few drying cracks uh, from where they seasoned out and cured, but they look really good, okay? In the back for our stringer boards, we have two back here that are uh, true, not, not, you know, if you buy lumber in the store now, it's a two by four is actually one and a half by three and a half. They're not really a two by four. However, these back here are true. They are rough cut sawn and they are 14 foot long and they are true two 
by tens. Uh, so we're looking forward to using those for our stringers, okay? We treated these. We treated these the old timer way. Uh, we laid these out and we used used motor oil. Okay, you can take used motor oil and it doesn't matter if it's come out of a diesel engine or a lawn mower or uh, out of your Ferrari uh, or out of your Kubota tractor, it really don't matter. Uh, but you can, you can use any kind of used motor oil and we used used motor oil in a paintbrush. And we coated these, these timbers really heavy. I mean, I laid it to them. I wanted them on there as thick as I, it would soak in. And we've had them here laid across this little utility trailer, uh, drying in the sun for about two weeks now. And uh, this will tell you how thick I put that oil on. They're finally, just now, starting to get a little dry to the touch. They're still a little oily feeling. Um, but they're getting close to being usable. So uh, just take used motor oil and liberally uh, coat, your, coat your timbers. And we probably won't coat the rafters uh, because the rafters lay right, the tin lays right on the rafters on top of a furring strip. And really, no moisture really gets to them. However, once we get them ripped and, and, and attached to the roof, the, the, the rafters, we may go ahead and treat those with motor oil just for insect protection. Uh, I don't know where you live, but around here during the early summer, boring bees are everywhere and if you have any kind of untreated lumber in a shed building or on your barn or whatever these boring bees will will attack your lumber like you wouldn't believe you'll find little holes about the you know size of a pencil all over your wood you'll see sawdust on the ground where these things are boring into your wood uh, to let the female to go in there to lay eggs it, it's it's a problem around here in the early early summer, like in June, May, and the first of June. Boring bees are just terrible. But if you treat them with an oil-based stain or oil, uh, the boring bees will fly around it, and they'll take a look at it and buzz right around your lumber and go somewhere else. Uh, we treated our barn. Our barn was built with rough cut lumber, but we treated, uh, well, I wouldn't say treated, we stained our barn with an oil-based stain, uh, a commercial oil-based stain. And we restain it about every three or four years. We'll go along and, and take a weekend and we'll restain our barn. That oil-based stain will keep the, the insects out of your wood. So the, the oil does is treating these timbers, especially the ones that go on the ground, are the reason for treating them is twofold. One, to keep insects out. Two, to preserve them while they're in the ground, to keep them from rotting. Um, and, it, and it works phenomenal. Uh, use motor oil, treat them liberally. I put this oil on so thick that it was just about dripping uh, off of them. And the ends, especially where the where the wood grain is stuff will soak in there uh, worse than anywhere and we have some old timey tricks that we do when we uh, are putting fence posts in the ground and fence post in the ground or post in the ground for a shed or a barn anything the same principle applies that we learned from some old timers and I found out without a doubt that it works. And we're going to be doing some fencing videos real soon. And when we do that, uh, I'm going to go into some depths on what to do when you're setting a fence post to make that post stay in the ground for many, many, many years without rotting and stay tight in the ground. So, uh, but anyway, these, this is the, the, the lumber right here that we're going to be using on uh, the shed build for our for our uh, po ground post. And then over here is some uh, tube of tins we're going to be using for 
uh, stringers. Okay, here on the trailer, as you can see, we have several uh, 15 foot boards. I'm sorry, they're 14 foot. These are 14 foot rough, rough sawn lumber. And these are an actual true three by eights, three by eights. So we're gonna be uh, getting out the table saw and ripping these into rafters for the, for the roof of the shed. And then we have all kind of other various lumber here. We have uh, a cedar post there that he gave me and uh, some other boards. It's like a, like a two by six and a two by eight that we're gonna be using on the shed build. So, uh, and we have all kind of boards under there. That it's like a one by, like a one by four that we're gonna be using for furring strips for this build. And these are not gonna be treated until we saw them, uh, until we rip them into rafters. Uh, treating them now and then having to handle them for rafters would just be a mess. So we're not gonna treat these until they're already cut into rafters and probably put on the roof. Then we'll go before any tin goes on, we'll go along and treat them once they're on the building. So we hope to bring you along for, for some of this build on the, on the uh, equipment shed. You know, uh, around the farm, uh, there's something going on all the time, whether it be, you know, building a, a, uh, an equipment shed or haying season or kidding season or lambing season, calfing season, you know, whatever, you, whatever the farm has, uh, something always going on. So uh, it's, it's a good life and we enjoy it. So thought I'd just show you real quick our lumber, our rough cut lumber and how we treated these uh, posts that are going to be our ground post for the for the shed our shed will be a uh, uh, 20 foot 20 foot by 12 uh, 20 foot long by 12 foot wide with a on one end it's a unique build because it's going to be attached to the other shed but a little bit lower and uh, one end the far end of the shed is going to have about a three foot overhang with with braces and the front and the back of the shed is going to have about a, the back will have a one foot overhang the front, at least a two, maybe a three, if we have enough lumber to build the, the braces. So we'll take you along with some of that as we're in the process of building it. Thanks for being with us today on the farm. God bless and have a good day.